We're here at the CPA booth looking at the Australiana swag bag that everybody is getting. So inside we've got Keep Cup, important, we want to try and be environmentally friendly at the conference. Tim Tams. Now Tim Tams are an Australian institution, uh, so we've got some sample ones here, so make sure you try those. Even better, bite the top off the Tim Tam and the bottom, slurp your coffee up through that in what's called the Tim Tam Slam. Caramello Koala, these are a childhood favourite, so it's a chocolate with caramel on the inside. Be warned, eating these is very messy. And then the last thing inside of our little packet is some Vegemite. Now, Vegemite is an Australian spread. It's salty. And be warned, only spread Vegemite in a very thin layer on toast or on crackers. Don't spread it thickly like jam or like peanut butter because you'll get a very nasty surprise. Yes, that's, that's right. Heaven. That seems like forever ago. So tell me about your journey as a student at UTS to where you are now. And we're here at the Zero booth, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Look, it's really amazing to see you again. Uh, and I, I still remember when you were teaching uh, uh, when I was a student. It's a really interesting subject. You keep me engaged. And that's why I'm in the accounting field. Uh, my journey to where I am today, I, I was an international student. I came here, I studied accounting for, for two years or so. And once I graduated, it's at a time of financial crisis. Ah. So it didn't, didn't turn out to be what I planned, but I per persisted. Uh, it was uh, challenging to say the least. And I landed my first ever uh, accounting job. And it specializes in, in insolvency. So, well, that would have been perfect at the financial yes, crisis. Yes, exactly. It was actually booming. So I, I fell into uh, that category for a few years, and uh, and uh, once I've moved, I've moved on, and I joined into a, a small public practice, two partners, three offices, and about 30 staff, and that's where I learned my, uh, you know, business services area. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's and where you started using Zero. Correct, correct. I got exposed to Zero. I love it. I really love it. It's so simple to use, and the CEO of Zero will love this. <laughs> I'm going to chat to him another day. But, yeah, it's, it's so easy to use that. At one point, I got so frustrated with the desktop accounting software one day. It's just the, 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 the time of taking one data, moving to another data, another area, that's just time consuming. Yeah. If, if it's everything in, in a cloud, using a cloud system, everything is one place. It's the same set of data, everyone's seeing the same thing. And that's one of the main reasons why I fall in love with Zero. So shortly after I joined that firm, uh, you left. I, I left and I decided to uh, work for, the, for this uh, amazing company. Fantastic, fantastic. And so what is your role now at Zero? What do you do? So my role now is looking after accounting and bookkeeping firms. Uh, for, for so those you help small practices yes, get uh, on board, correct. work with their clients. Correct. And, and now more, more so for the uh, big four or the mid-tier firms. Oh, wow. So what they do is they, is they are such a big firm. And what, mean, what that means is that they need some education in place because uh, there's people coming in all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they need uh, to learn about how the system works. That's where I come in and make sure. The, the good analogy I like to use is the mobile phone. Yep. I, I bought this phone for two years ago and I've only ever used 20% of the capacity. <laughs> so my role essentially is to ensure that the user use up to 80% or more. Wow, okay. So, so that is my role is to help them use the system to the fullest so they can enjoy the experience and uh, eventually loves it and recommend it to others. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's great to hear your story, Sam. Thank you. And um, if you want to hear more about Zero, I will make sure I leave some comments or I'll leave something in the comments. Um, hi, everyone. I'm here with Heather Smith. And Heather is a YouTuber, a podcaster, an author, a speaker. Is there something you don't do? I just distribute content any means possible. <laughs> so if you're an accountant and you're doing cloud accounting, Heather's the person you want to talk to. Heather, tell us about what your videos and your podcasts are all about. So everything is focused on the ecosystem that sits around the online accounting space. So it's all the different solutions that improve productivity, workflow and efficiency and they plug in. 
So it may be a tool like Zapier that pushes one thing to another, or it may be a full robust solution like Receipt Bank that plugs in and uh, does the, almost the full accounts payable for the, for the business. Because I guess as students, we sort of teach them about Xero, we teach them about MYOB, but we don't talk about the fact that there are all these other bolt-ons and connections between all of these systems to make workflow a lot easier yeah, absolutely. for accountants. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely I'll put links to uh, Heather's work here. Yeah. So Heather, tell me about your start as an accountant. Okay. So I, I think when we were chatting earlier, Heather said at 14, she knew she wanted to be an accountant. Yeah, 14, um, I, I fell in love with uh, accounting. It was a serene and really balanced uh, uh, subject. And I knew that with it, I could use my intelligence, but I could travel the world because debits and credits are the same all over the world. Except and North Korea. Oh, okay. You, you, there, are I, no, there is the no depreciation in North Korea. Oh, okay. Well, I, I possibly wasn't <laughs> planning to visit North Korea and that's good to know. Um, but I do, um, has enabled me to um, work and live in multiple countries. And uh, I now have clients all over the world. Um, and I, uh, using the cloud technology, I don't do tax, I just focus on talking to clients, have clients all over the world, and that's really exciting. From my business, I run it entirely from my handbag, I can work from anywhere and my clients can be anywhere, which has been so really fabulous. exciting. And so what I'll say is those solutions that we're talking about that sit around the ecosystem, they offer a lot of free education if you sign up for them. You can adopt and you can actually learn these solutions, and the deeper some of these specific solutions that you know, you can increase your hourly rate based on I am not the generalist, I am the expert, and it's the expert that has paid a, a greater hourly rate. And that's a really good recommendation for students. If you're thinking, how am I gonna make myself stand out in the job market, one of those ways could be with doing a lot of this free education from yeah, a lot of these you, you can go off and do certifications in it. Really, um, there is, you need to work at it, but that, that is the opportunity that you could go, and you could go to an employee and go, well, hey, not only do I have a degree, I've got five certifications and all these other solutions, and I'm aware of what's actually going on in the industry. So that you can be of value from that very first day. Very first Fantastic. day. Fantastic, well the future looks bright for accountants, and with a career like Heather's, if you're up to date on technology, and you're adopting early and staying in touch and that idea yeah. of lifelong learning, you'll go far. Thanks Heather, and have a great week. Thank you. from RMIT, which is the, what does it stand for? Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, but really it's just RMIT. RMIT, now. and they're doing something really interesting in regards to ethics. So Gillian, tell us a little bit about this game that okay. we're seeing here. Yeah, so what we thought we'd do is we'd introduce the new um, restructured code of ethics to accountants and actually train them how to understand the code and apply the code in practice through immersive simulation technologies. Ah. So yeah, so we've developed a serious game which um, enables the player to become a player in an organisation or a, an accountant within an organisation and they work through the game through a series of challenges and depending on the path they take and the choices they make there can be different um, endings and, and different pathways or storylines through the simulation. Fantastic. And is this open to people, for people to use at other universities? Uh, at this stage, what we are hoping to do is to um, have it as a CPD uh, three hours for Fantastic. the pr practitioners, or we will set it up as a an online micro-credential, a three-hour a three micro-credential which will ha be badged. So the students doing it will receive a, a micro-credential badge which will have the RMIT School of Accounting logo on and that will go on transcripts, they can use it on their CVs. Fantastic. Um, well this sounds excellent because we know from the Banking Royal Commission the issue of trust and ethics and integrity has become a mm. big one for accountants. Yep. And any way that we can try and refresh people's memories, I think about that is really great. For sure, well, fantastic. for sure. I will put some links to this program in the comments to the video. Great. And if you're interested, get in touch with my RMIT. Thank you, bye. bye. I'm here with Angela from Deakin and she was telling me about a really interesting opportunity 
to recognise your soft skills. So Angela, tell us what it's all about. Uh, yes, uh, Deakin University has um, developed a rigorous um, criteria framework for recognising those soft skills that are really hard to actually tell your employer about and succeed in actually showing what you've done, Teamwork. your level of experience. Critical thinking, problem solving skills, communication, all those really key soft skills that you need to actually perform in your day to day business. Fantastic. And so, how can people get involved if they think I'd like to have some sort of, and this will be a micro credential, so it'll actually be something that you can, I guess, put on your CV? Absolutely. Badge so, on LinkedIn. yes. We're, so, we issue badges, and they're actually recognised at. Um, bachelor's level, grad cert, grad dip, and up into master's level. So based on your level of experience and those skill sets, um, the way you manage and lead and how you innovate and your level of leadership, um, you can actually be accredited against those. We issue you a badge, put it on LinkedIn, put it on your CV, put it out there. Fantastic, excellent, and that really helps employers know what you can do. Um, and if you want to find out more, how can people do that? Go straight to um, Deakin Credentials. Um, all the information is on our website. Uh, you can uh, easily enroll as an individual, or if you've got a business and you want to enroll a bunch of people, you can do that too. Fantastic, awesome. Thanks very much, Angela. Thanks, Amanda. I'm here with Maggie from the ACCA and that sort of qualification probably a lot of Australian students have heard of so can you tell us a little bit about what the qualification is? Yeah sure so ACCA we currently have two and a hundred and eight thousand members and we have over half a million students in 178 countries and it's a, con it's a qualification that's open access so that means you don't need a degree uh, to start studying towards it you enter at the level that's right for your previous educational level. Uh, so in total, it has a range of exams across foundation level, and then we have the new level, which is the professional level. Ah. Uh, and at that professional level, which is the equivalent to a master's qualification, um, you will undertake two key elements, which is the strategic professional, which is a case study based exam, and oh, the strategic. I know. So I love case study based exams. <laughs> it replicates how you work in the real world. So you get a lot of information, and then you, you may have, have to figure to, out what to do with it. Exactly. And then you have to potentially present, do a presentation, do a report, do minutes. So huge opportunity. Fantastic. And then you also undertake a specialisms. So you you take. That's very different from a lot of the yeah. profession. I remember chartered accountants many years ago had specialisations and removed them. So what sort of areas can you specialise in? Besides so, audit, of course, because I love audit. I'm, my background's audit, so I was an auditor for 18 years. I love audit. I love audit's, audit. Audit's my favourite. And so you, yes, you can do advanced audit, uh, but you can also do financial reporting, uh, you can use tax, and you can do, use business management. But everything is supporting around the fact that we are designed to create strategic thinkers that will be the business leaders of the future or the audit leaders of yeah, the future. Leaders. I love that it's open <laughs> access because I know that a lot of viewers on my channel are ACCA, they're studying the F8 paper. Excellent. Um, and one of the things that, that they often tell me is that it's great that no matter where you are, you've got access to this qualification. And one of the things I see accounting as being is one of the reasons why it's so powerful is that it's a great social mobility tool. Oh, so, so if true. you're uh, wanting to improve your situation financially for yourself, for your family, um, perhaps even move country, then yeah. accounting is one of those professions where you know we're all speaking the same language everywhere around the world. And the ability to help students do that through a profession and through an open access qualification. Yeah. And we have it's got really it's unbelievable when we meet our members and actually hear how it's made such a difference to their lives and uh, it is. I mean, people want to travel. They want to experience life across the world. So we did some research uh, called Generation Next, and we surveyed 19,000 wow. uh, members, students, and affiliates of ACCA across 150 countries. And 81% uh, of those um, actually wanted to 
one set up their own business so they're hugely ambitious That's fantastic. Uh, but a huge number 76 percent wanted to work overseas so so much of it is that global passport that's such an attraction and i think that diversity that we yeah. have within the profession now and people traveling all around yeah. can only make business stronger and that we can understand different perspectives uh, get an understanding of different cultures and different business practices and then how we can all speak the same language exactly that, so. and you know, we look at how business is changing and that's how accountants need to change and we see the drivers for change for the future. And technology is a great opener, which allows actually us to work in a much more global way, mm. but it does change the skill sets that we require. Uh, and that's what we're looking to develop, those skill sets that will really set you up for the future. Fantastic. Well, big thanks to Maggie. And I'll leave some links to the ACCA program. Yeah. Are we allowed to call it ACCA? We prefer ACCA, okay. but uh, <laughs> I hear ACCA quite a lot. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm here with Mark Edmondson from Inflow. Mark is ex-PwC just like me, but uh, has gone on to make a really interesting product that I wanted to share with you. So Mark, tell us about what Inflow is all about. So Inflow is about uh, enabling uh, data analytics and more advanced capabilities for, for everyone. So it's about really making accessible these cutting edge techniques, but also really addressing some of those real barriers to entry. So things like making getting data from clients really easy, things like producing consistent and simple to understand analytical outputs, and really showing people how they can start to knit into their existing techniques to start replacing some of the old things that they do and start reimagining what it is possible for things like audit or other accountancy services. Fantastic, and the reason I inflow was brought to my attention was because for students, I think it's important to get an exposure to these new sorts of technologies and not to be proficient, but to understand that when you're going out into the workplace, these sorts of technologies are becoming more and more integrated into accounting practices all around the world. So how can people find out more about Inflow? Well, you're absolutely right. There's, there's so many white papers out there, so much theory. It's great to actually get in there and start to understand the practical applications of these techniques. So uh, we've, we've gone down the route of really trying to make this accessible for everyone and trying to get people away from demonstrations to actually playing with things. So uh, you can actually go to our website, you can see loads of videos of the functionality, you can uh, listen to some of the thought leaders around the world talking about the cutting edge techniques and also the real challenges for the profession. But I think the real exciting thing is that people can get a 30 day free trial, they can come and they can actually start looking at one of our example clients and start seeing what exactly these outputs mean and how could they actually transform something that people are learning about the more traditional technique, we can start sharing how that might actually evolve very quickly. And by the time you get into an accounting practice, what those techniques should hopefully look like rather than what they currently do now. Well, fantastic. I think for students, that's going to be one of the most important things is being able to use technology um, and use technology efficiently. Yeah. And you know, from what we heard at the uh, round table on technology yes. yesterday, Data analytics is this skill set that students seem to be lacking. So even if your course doesn't teach it, there are ways that you can access free resources online. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be as technical as the kind of world of data science might sound. I mean, we've it does really sound complicated. It, it, it does, and when you start hearing people talk about the need to be able to code, to be able to really write scripts, that's that, that used. That's scary. It, it, it does, and that's what the old technologies used to require. You used to have to be able to code, to be able to do basic things like find transactions on a weekend. Now you click a button and you look at a graph and you try and understand what that means. And so what I'd really emphasize to people is don't be scared. This is not a completely wild area. It's about simply looking at things differently and using more analytical skills to look at things and understand what they mean rather than kind of locking ourselves in a room working on laptops. We actually find it really interesting. A lot of our firms who use our technology now sit with clients with iPads and play with graphics. And that's just more exciting and more interesting than the previous experience would have been. Certainly when I started my career, I would have loved to have been doing that. <laughs> Imagine trying to generate those in Excel 20 years ago. Yeah, well, it's just the things where like the volumes of data that we work with break Excel. And, and at the point where you break Excel, you know that you need a better tool. I like to say Excel's the plug where software should exist, so. Fantastic, excellent. Well, thanks very much, Mark, for taking the time to speak to us. And uh, if you want to find out more, I'll leave some links in the comments. Thanks very much. Hi everybody, 
Dr. Amanda here with William Tan, and mm -hmm. William is a UTS grad. Mm -hmm. He's an accounting graduate of mine. Correct. He's a U at Uni program grad, mm -hmm. and I was excited <laughs> to run into him here today at Wakoa. So, Will, what are you doing here at Wakoa? So today I'm just volunteering, so just sort of helping people with sort of directions, um, I guess any general queries they have, so. Awesome, and so what, what do you do now that you've left university and you're spread your wings, <laughs> what are you doing? So um, I'm still working in the audit profession, so back in the day, um, yourself Amanda gave me a bit of advice when I was doing my double degree, so um, ended up continuing working in the audit profession, completing the CA program at the moment, so. Um, I guess I'll see where things go from here. And have you done the audit module yet? It's yes. Here? And you passed? Yes. <laughs> My goodness, I would have been in trouble if you didn't. So what do you love about accounting? Um, I think what I like about it is how diverse it is. It's not just one of those roles where you kind of have to stick to one area. Um, you're just in the office. So I think it's there's such a breadth to amount of things that you can do. <laughs> Why not? Stuff, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's quite a range of work that you can do and even within the audit profession, um, I guess with all the digital disruption, there's a lot of things that are changing and I think the roles just continually involve, especially with tech. And so for the future, what mm. do you think is going to be important for you to try and tackle or get an understanding of for the future in accounting and in audit? Um, I definitely say just being adaptable. So whether it's new technologies, whether it's um, I guess the way that you work with people. So even for myself starting out, um, I guess at a mid-tier firm and moving to a big four firm, just seeing the ways that people work have changed also. So um, I think a big thing now is just the flexibility in working. So um, I guess supporting that would just be the IT tech side of things. So. It's always great to have a really solid foundation in IT, whether it's things like Excel or using um, all the free online tools like um, yeah, there are heaps Google of Calendar. Online courses exactly. As well that you can do. Like if you're a student, your university probably has yep. access to Lynda.com. Exactly. Yeah. That would be one thing. Mm. So I think technology is going to be one of those key things, and it means that lifelong learning is going to be important. Very true. Regardless of whether you're a student, mm -hmm. um, a, a CA candidate, a CPA candidate an accountant or someone who's been in the profession for 20 years or 30 years, Very technology true. is going to be the big key and moving forward with that is going to be really, really important. Well, I want to thank Will for <laughs> talking with me. He's taken some, I got permission from his boss to have a little break. <laughs> a little bit of a break. Chat. <laughs> I have the amazing pleasure to be here with Fiona Campbell and if you don't know Fiona Campbell, she sits on the International Auditing Standards Board and she's one of the main architects between behind ISA 315, which I am so excited about. Like, <laughs> absolutely excited. But I've known Fiona for quite a while. We worked on a case study book. We did, a long time ago. <laughs> a very long time ago. So Fiona, tell me about why you chose accounting as a career. I think I fell into accounting a little bit because uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do at university and so when I was taking a now called a gap year I think but I did an exchange overseas um, I just applied for a number of things and my mother made sure I got into one that sounded like I might get a job at the end of it and when I then started my course I thought oh accounting's really boring it's debits and credits and I wasn't really a fan of my accounting subjects and my auditing I wasn't outstanding at by any stretch but what I realized when I finished my degree and started working is it's not really about the numbers it's really about the people and how people behave and how you engage and interact with people to get the information you need and to be able to do the work that you need to do and I find people fascinating and I really enjoy that work so I think that's probably why despite my experience at university where I kept thinking oh it's debits and credits and I don't know if this is really for me in the real world it's totally different and and I absolutely love it fantastic and you started in New Zealand no I didn't oh, I actually went to university I, in Australia I feeling that you're a Kiwi I am a Kiwi oh you are a Kiwi <laughs> I, knew I am a Kiwi. That was in my audit brain somewhere is, that we yes, chatted. Yes, so I did my university here in Australia, just outside of Melbourne, and uh, at Deakin University. And then my parents and family had already moved back to New Zealand by then. So I thought, well, if I don't get a job, I'll go home. And I got a job as a graduate at Ernst & Young, and I've stayed. I was, I think, I'm the first batch of grads at Ernst & Young after the Ernst & Winnie and Arthur Young merger. Ah. That's how old I am. So well, I was Cooper's and Librand days. 
That was a slightly later, slightly, <laughs> slightly later merger. Fantastic. And so would you still recommend accounting as a career for people? Absolutely. And I would in fact even recommend auditing as a career. Of course we would recommend auditing. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but if you stand back and say, I'm really interested in people, I'm interested in businesses, I really want to know about how business operate, how do they become successful, how do they fail, what can we learn from that? You have the license to go and ask all of those questions as the auditor. And by law, you're allowed to go and ask all of those sorts of questions. <laughs> and also as the accountant, understanding the numbers and where they come from helps you understand the business and the risks that come out of that business. So I, I highly rec recommend as a, as a starting point for your career, if you're not 100% sure, but you're interested in some kind of business, then it's a great place to start. Awesome. Well, I want to thank Fiona for talking to us and uh, keep an eye out for her next piece of work. Is that going to be 540? No, 540 is no, not 540 my baby. was not you. <laughs> not my but, baby. But uh, hopefully the final I315 we all look forward to seeing. So Next thanks very much, Fiona. You're welcome. Thank you. That wraps up day one at Wakoa. I hope you've enjoyed my summary of the day and we'll have more to see and more people to interview tomorrow. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.